interesting to see so many people here and to read some of the uh, ideas that are coming through. Um, so I, I'm going to give a very broad outline and then I need to leave a bit early and um, but I'll try and join on the phone because I'm on my way to meet my parents for the first time uh, in a couple of months. So that'd be really nice. Um, so each year at the end of September, international leaders from business, government and civil society meet in New York for talks. This meeting takes place alongside the UN General Assembly, and it's a really, really vital time to influence decision making. And the Climate Fringe is going to be encouraging organisations across Scotland to run activities that week. Um, it's tying in with an event in England and Wales called Great Big Green Week, which is broad, broadly similar to what we're doing. Um, it's an opportunity to tie the work that's going on across Scotland and in, in local communities into something bigger and to make explicit the link between the local and the global in the run-up to COP. So if you're already planning to run events around this time, this is a really good opportunity for wider publicity and engagement in your work and to connect in with a movement of activity building ahead of COP. Like we'd love to publicize whatever you've got planned. We wanna bring more audiences to you. We want to link you in with other organizations and other things that are happening and make this feel like a real movement of activity ahead of COP. Um, if you've been looking for a hook to get your community involved with climate issues and campaigning, this is the perfect opportunity to do something, supported by a network of others, and with some advice and guidance via the toolkit that Tammy's created and the resources. Um, and we're really hoping to perhaps bring new people into the climate movement through this, perhaps people who haven't organised around climate before, but they, they might organise with their PTA or um, with their local community council or with the other communities they're involved in, but they want to step out into doing some organizing around climate. This is the perfect place for people to start and us to kind of form a real community around it. Um, from our point of view, it gives a really great kickstart to Scottish organizing around COP. We want COP26 to be a moment that people in Scotland are really ready for and can be fully involved with. Um, so when the international move moment comes and global activists and civil society organisations from all over the world arrive in Scotland, um, COVID allowing, um, we'll, we'll need people to volunteer for, for our work, um, give spare rooms up to activists, help, help within the hubs that we're creating and come and take part in the big family friendly march in Glasgow, um, COVID allowing. Um, and all the other sorts of things that are connected to COP. So September is really our time to start to prepare and create momentum in our own communities ahead of this. Um, if you're a Glasgow group, we've set aside space within the Killing Park complex, which is just being refurbished and it will open on the 1st of September. Um, we want to run a series of real life in-person events in their brand new refurbished spaces. So we want to open it up, it's kind of an open invitation. If you're in Glasgow and you want to run an event, you can book some space there and that'll be part of this this festival, um, it will be an opportunity to connect Glasgow communities in with this space, which is going to be one of the key hubs for civil society organising around COP26. So if you're interested in holding an event in that space, please let us know. Um, to help support groups and especially community groups and grassroots groups to deliver these activities, we have a fund and we're inviting groups to apply for it. So it went live on the website today. Um, there's a closing date at the end of May. So you've got a bit of time before then. And then there's an, two other closing dates before Climate Fringe Week. So there should be plenty of time for you to get um, kind of organised to put some put an application in. It's especially suited to groups that don't have a bank account and may not be constituted because we're set up to pay the costs of the events direct by paying invoices for venue hire or materials or whatever, rather than to pay directly to the group. Um, so you can see the groups that receive money already in the first round, and I've linked to them on the website. So you can have a little look at the things that happened already. And we are particularly focusing on that round on Glasgow groups, whereas this time we're looking for all across Scotland groups that want to take part in Climate Fringe Week. So things are uncertain around COP at the moment, um, as you've probably noticed, whether it will be in person or whether it'll be part in person part online or all online or even delayed um, but for us in Scotland this internationally focused events always been about the opportunity it gives for us to connect more people into the climate movement not so much about the event itself and it's about inspiring action and levering commitments out of our leaders and connecting our movement in Scotland with international activists. It's always been an opportunity to create a powerful legacy for Glasgow. 
and for Scotland in terms of progress made and connections built and people inspired. So we are determined that this will happen, this legacy will happen, whether, whatever form COP takes. And the Climate Fringe Week is really, really important for us to create this legacy. So if fewer people from global civil society can travel to Scotland, it, it only means that we in Scotland have more responsibility on our shoulders um, during COP to bring the voices of civil society to the leaders. You know, we need to make more of a noise and be heard and gather messages from our colleagues all over the world and to bring them powerfully into COP. So Climate Fringe Week's our chance to get the word out, get mobilised, get everyone together in Scotland, um, while also building up our own local groups and campaigns and activists so that they've got more capacity and tools to deliver and are more networked. So I hope you'll all join us in September and I look forward to hearing what Tammy has to say. Brilliant, thank you. I think that's a really good point right there. Um, thank you for the overview. And I know that Kat has around five minutes before dinner with your parents. So I wonder if anyone has any questions, you can just raise your hand up or put a star in the chat if your video is off about anything that Kat just mentioned. Got a question from Trish. And is there anyone else? Okay, we'll start with you, Trish. Um, I just wondered whether you could give me, uh, 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 can you put it in the chat, the link for the Glasgow uh, group, the use of the community path and so on. I, I don't uh, live in Glasgow, but I've got relatives there who would be interested. Um, yeah, so we, what, we, what I suggest is um, that we put something specific on our website about that, which okay. I'm not sure we have already up there, but I'll, I'll put the link to the fund on the, the Zoom. Oh group. yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Brilliant. And does her, anyone have any other questions as well? Okay. Um, and just before, I'll just send it over again, but if you could change your name on the, um, on your, on the chat, so sorry, on your, on your Zoom name to um, include different numbers for um, the different groups. So group one is if you're thinking of organising a climate week in your community. Group two is if you're thinking of organising an event that is part of a specific campaign or a campaigning event. And then group three for activity based event that might be craftivism or a wildlife um, event or something to do with food or cycling. So just um, I can show you an example. There's the three buttons at the top right of your, of your video. And if you click rename, I'm going to make mine number one. Great, thank you, Marilyn and Tamara, cheers. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so I'm just going to share my screen and go through um, the toolkit that I've created to help event organizers get started in organizing their event. Okay, so with the toolkit, um, it's essentially a guide on how to organize an event for Climate Fringe with loads of um, tips and suggestions. And um, it also links to lots of other resources that um, people have created to organize um, different types of events. So it starts off with considering planning with COVID-19 in mind, and we're going to make sure that we communicate with all event organizers about the government guidelines as well. Um, and with the, with the work that we're doing, we're going to have streaming capacity in our venues and in Kinning Park Complex, we'll have um, the ability to li live stream all events. So if there is limited capacity um, for physical attendees, then we'll have um, it streamed online via YouTube and Facebook, et cetera. Um, and we've also included a guide about accessibility um, and climate justice as well. And incorporating that into our events is, is important and part of um, um, the events that we've been doing at Stop Climate Chaos Scotland the past year. So if you want to organize organize event, this just gives you a bit of information on how to get started. So um, the first thing that we suggest doing is uploading your event to the Climate Fringe events calendar. And the link to upload your event is here and I'll be passing on the toolkit. Um, and it's relatively simple. Um, if you've used Eventbrite, Eventbrite before, you fill in the event details, the time, the image, the description, um, accessibility information, and then that goes onto our calendar on the Climate Fringe website so that 
um, we can promote the event and, and try as much as we can to promote the event for you. And you can use that as a link, a directory for attendees to the event. And we'd also recommend you have your own um, sign up um, system as well for the event. Um, as well as that, using our logo. So there's the option here to download the Climate Fringe Week logo to include um, at the bottom of your event or the artwork as well. Um, and we've also got the hashtag Climate Fringe Week. So make sure that you tweet that, use it on Facebook and Instagram, and then that will be given to us via a specific feed and we can share your events out to our network as well. So we have a few ideas and suggestions for events if you haven't thought of some already. So you can get creative with craftivism. Um, and here's just a link for um, Stitches for Survival is a fantastic craftivist network. And there's loads of ideas there. We're setting up an open mic night as well. And we've got guides on how to do that. Um, if you're thinking of organizing a political event, then there's information on how to organize the hustings in your area um, or how to lobby your local MS. MSP or MP or local councillors, and we've got some suggestions of campaigns as well. And then, of course, standing up for nature because the um, yeah the climate crisis is of course um, um, includes the nature crisis that we need to look after and protect nature and reconnect people with um, the local area. So we've got. Um, some resources from RSPB as well of brilliant suggestions for events that you can organize there. Um, and if you're a faith group as well, we've got a um, list of resources and um, climate action in your faith group as well. And something that I just want to check if Kat's still there, but something that's um, very important for us is as well, um, making sure that those... Um... Hi, Kat. <laughs> Um, I just thought if you could quickly just um, speak about the disability inclusive um, climate action events, because you've been speaking at quite a few um, events around that and why why we believe it's an important topic to discuss. Absolutely, yes. Um, well, I've been, I started off by just doing one webinar um, around disability and climate justice, and it was incredibly well attended by people from the disability um, movement. and there's an incredible enthusiasm from people within that movement to engage around issues around climate. And so um, since then, I've been involved in two or three, I think I've got another one in the diary, events with the disability movement talking about climate. And I thought it was really important to have a section in there for disability people's associations to join in. And um, we hope that we'll be able to kind of join these two movements together with our work, because I think that they, they kind of benefit each other. You know, we get better policy if we work with people with disabilities. And also if we work together with the energy that there is within that movement and the activists who are incredibly effective campaigners. So um, I'm hoping we can get some really good synergies going with our work. Thank you, Kat. So I know you're just about to go out. Um, brilliant. And um, as well, um, there's the great, um, in incredible concept of the Climate Cafe, and there's um, a resource on, on how to set one of those up in your area. And it's a brilliant way to bring people together um, with some cake and coffee um, and discuss issues that um, people care about, environmental issues in their area. So it's a really, really brilliant network. And um, we've been in touch with some climate cafes up in the northeast of Scotland who are going to be organising some events during Climate Fringe Week as well. Um, and there's also film screenings and Tamara from Take One Action is here. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, and we've got some um, tips of some brilliant film lists that they've got as well. And um, Tamara, I was wondering if you um, would be happy to um, give a short um, outline on your local support for sure. um, local sure. film screenings. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, as Tammy said, my name is Tamara. I'm here representing Take One Action Film Festivals. Um, our festival this year happens to coincide with uh, Climate Fringe Week, which is great because we focus on social and climate justice and have done so for many, many years. But we wanted to be able to provide access to documentaries we've screened in the past, which we believe provide a fantastic opportunity for people to actually grapple with what happens at COP and what's at stake. Um, so we have four feature film documentaries um, that have been screened in previous years at Take One Action, most of which are from the last four or five years, all of which represent the voices of um, people who have traditionally been excluded from COP. 
um, well, three out of four actually do that. Um, and they, the stories of the protagonists within these documentaries uh, take them to COP usually in Paris um, and contrast the work they're trying to do within civic society to organize around climate uh, and further the climate justice um, agenda and their experience of COP. But all of them also point to the importance of being able to engage with uh, the nature of the negotiations, the, um, the and to engage with the elected officials who go to these. Uh, might need someone to mute one second. Who's? I think it might be Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, so we've got four film titles and we're looking, uh, we're applying ourselves for funds to make these films available for free for any community groups in Scotland that may want to, to screen them. And we're hoping to be able to make those available both for in-person screenings and online screenings. At least that's what we're working towards so that it can suit the needs of um, different groups and the different ways in which they may come together. We are also applying for funds to ensure that all the films can be fully captioned for people who are deaf or hard of hearing, but that is also really helpful for people for whom English is not their first language, for example. Um, and our hope is also that we can put together, it won't be quite as snazzy as what Tammy's just shown you, but a resource uh, discussion guide and resource uh, linked to each of the film, focusing on some of the particular topic that the films are uh, exploring. So for example, there's one film that that tells the story of a, of a Kenyan farmer and the difficulties surrounding food sovereignty um, caused by adverse weather events exacerbated by the climate change. And um, we would concentrate on food and as, yeah, we would, we would put a resource together that would provide a discussion guide, but would also point you towards campaigns that exist currently in Scotland around um, food sovereignty, around justice and the way that climate justice feeds into these conversations as well. So that's still, still trying to put it all together but that but that's the the hope is that we can make these films available for free as a way to engage community members with um, those issues in perhaps more detail and in a very accessible fashion we believe that film is a really accessible way of getting to grips with really complex issues so uh, if you're interested you're welcome to drop me a line in chat here i'm going to put my email address in the chat as well in case you want to get in touch um, we're still at the early stages of the planning but if you share a, a, a notion um, if you let us know that you're interested in taking part we would then keep in touch with you once we can make a, a proper public announcement about the availability of this scheme which we hope to announce early early august at the latest thank you brilliant thank you thank you tamara um, that's great and yeah it's amazing that you have that resource um, available for local groups um, to use so that's fantastic um, just going back to the toolkit as well putting some information on organizing a smartphone or filmmaking workshop which is we all know how um, um, yeah film is as you said tomorrow film is a really powerful way to communicate the climate message and um, being able to equip your community with the tools to create your own films is absolutely absolutely fantastic. So there's a there's a resource there on doing that, and I hope some of you um, organize organize some some film work workshops around that. Um, as well, I've included putting on a climate Kaylee. So there is plans in October to have a huge world climate Kaylee, um, which is partnered with us at the Climate Fringe and SCCS <laughs> um, party symbol from tomorrow um, and um, the COP26 coalition, but um, we did a Climate Cayley online. We've done two actually on Zoom and they've been a lot of fun, but hopefully you'll be able to organize one in person come September or, or some sort of hybrid event. So um, we've just put some tips um, on doing that and we love Cayleys and we're very proud of them. So as well, it's um, some of you are here because you're thinking of organizing a climate week, a full week of events in your area. And it's fantastic to see that's happening in Sky. Um, and we are inspired, incredibly inspired by Climate Week Northeast, who have put together a brilliant program um, of events that just happened in March online, but they plan their festival a year in advance. And they've got over 50 different events in that week and it's it's unbelievable the the collaborators and partners that they have and it's been going yeah for over five years and um jess jess one of the organizers is um so knowledgeable in organizing um climate week so we can also connect you up um and 
um, if you're interested in that, then of course, um, join group one. Um, and then as Kat said, we've got um, a fund available uh, for, for those who are looking to run an event and that will be, um, submissions for that will be by the end of May. So all of that information I will share with you on the Climate Fringe website and I'll put a link in the chat. I'll stop sharing my screen and um, does anyone have any questions before I open up the breakout rooms and we can go in and discuss um, the three different topics? You can just do a little stars in the chat or, a, or wave your hand. Got no shaking, no nods. Okay, I'm gonna just set up the breakout rooms now. So what I've done here is I've made room one, which is if you're thinking of organizing a climate week, room two, which is for a campaign, and room three is an activity of some sort. So um, I hope in the group you can discuss and share ideas with each other, and then we'll ask for one person from the group to report back for um, a minute or two on what was discussed. So the rooms are open for you to choose yourself. Do you want, Tammy, do you want me to choose a room? Um, yes, please. Could you join into room, room three, please? Thank you. Okay. I'm not seeing any any uh, link with the breakout rooms on my Trish, I'll, um, I'll link you to room three. Thank you. I haven't done before. It's like, how do I join the room? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi there. Hi. Hello, everyone. Great, so um, just going to 